inner conscious speaking to you. Yeah. Fuck everyone that wants to ride the dick now. All right, YouTube, what is going on? It is your boy, Jarese, back at it with another episode of Real Talk. And today's topic, Fanny Willis, or as they call her in the in the courtroom, Fanny, because apparently that's the way you pronounce her name. But I'm going to call her Fanny because uh, she was out of uh, giving up that Fanny to Mr. Nathan Hot Dog Wade. So, <laughs> but anyway, I am about to break this down with a with surgical precision as to why I know both of these mugs are lying. And yeah, y'all just sit back, relax, go grab a drink, um, and watch me work. So, video number one, right? The cell phone towers. So apparently they have cell phone data from 2021 showing that Nathan Wade was in the vicinity of her apartment in the wee hours of the night. And for those of us who've been in relationships and know how booty calls work, um, generally speaking, if you drive to somebody's house, a female, if you are a male, at past 10 o'clock and you leave early in the morning, chances are you probably uh, clapped those cheeks. So um, let's give Nathan Wade a round of applause for uh, smashing Fanny. He got a lot of game to be able to um, talk to Fanny like that. But, you know, since she didn't need no man, she said that in the courtroom. But, you know, but let's let's get into it. My attorneys for former President Donald Trump say they have new cell phone evidence that supports their push to disqualify Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis in the alleged election interference case. So the defense attorneys allege Willis was involved in a romantic relationship with Nathan Wade before she appointed him as a special. So you hear that they were alleged to be in a romantic relationship. And then here's here's the rub, right? Here's the lawyer speak. Fanny is trying to say, no, we weren't in a, ro a romantic relationship, but OK, cool. So what was he doing at your apartment at 10 o'clock at night? Just clapping the cheeks. OK, technically, y'all weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. But guess what? That still involves romance. So that's the angle they're trying to play at for those of y'all who are not smart enough to get what they're trying to do with lawyer speak. So we weren't in a romantic relationship. We weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. We weren't um, fiancés. We weren't husband and wife. So, yeah, it wasn't a romantic relationship. Cough, cough, cough. A prosecutor in 2021 and that the two financially benefited from that move. Willis and Wade have both denied that, testifying that while they spent time together, they weren't involved until 2022. Grace King joins us to explain the latest filing that's raising. Yeah, they weren't involved until after he got his divorce, but he was just over at her apartment or her condo X amount of times, right? Not to mention those 12,000 texts and those, what, 2,000 phone calls in 11 months? Weird. Yeah, I'm sure it was just business. Questions once again about that timeline. Right now, this exhibit focuses on 2021, the year D.A. Willis hired Nathan Wade as special prosecutor. It alleges they not only shared more than 2,000 voice calls and nearly 12,000 interactions that year, but also that data shows Wade's phone near the condo where Willis was living dozens of times. Coincidence, I'm sure, right? And then look at this dude right here. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. I know a slime ball when I see one. What do you mean by that? He's got the old bald dude stank face on. Like, bro, this dude look crooked. Like, bro, this, this dude looks crooked, bro. Like, I can tell he is shady as a mug. Just, just look at the energy he gives off. Like, let's let's keep it real. Like, this dude is shady. Do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. No, so it'd be less than 10 times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Defense attorney Steve Sadow, who represents former President Donald Trump, is calling this testimony from special prosecutor Nathan Wade into question. He says phone records reveal at least 35 occasions where Wade's phone connected to cell phone towers near Willis's Hapeville condo for extended periods of time. One of the possible conclusions that one could draw is, you know, he wasn't being truthful. And the other conclusion is that this was 2021. Um, we're now in 2024, almost three years later, and he probably wasn't prepared, you know, to testify as to that. Former DeKalb County District Attorney Robert James, who isn't affiliated with the case, urges caution when it comes to this analysis. It does not establish that there was, in fact, a romantic relationship. Really, nigga? 
prior to the time that they said it was a romantic relationship. All it shows is contacting and perhaps communication. The filing focuses on two specific interactions. One in September 2021 that suggests Wade was near Willis's hateful condo from 10.45 p.m. until 3.30 in the morning. Oh my God! Wow! From there, they say he went home to East Cobb and texted Willis at 4.20. The other in November 2021, just weeks after he was hired. They say he received a call from Willis around 11.30 p.m. and drove to Hapeville shortly after. Their analysis says he stayed there until nearly 5 a.m. That's literally a booty call. <laughs> oh, my God. She calls, he leaves, he goes over, spends the night, and has to leave in the morning. Oh my god, that is literally what we call a booty call. So, Just clap for that, you stupid bastard. It obviously looks suspicious, but ultimately, a judge has to make a decision based on law in the court of law and not in the court of public opinion. Now in court, Wade said any phone records suggesting he was in Hapeville more frequently would be wrong and that his visits to Willis's condo were for business reasons. His attorney... Really, nigga? He did not respond to our questions for comments today, nor did the DA's office. As for those records, the judge will have to decide whether the analysis is credible and admissible before factoring it into his decision. All right, Grace. Thank you. All right, so that's video number one, right? Video number one. So now let's look at the top 10 heated moments from the Trump prosecutor DA Fannie Willis fiery testimony. So. And then let's let's get, let's get into Fani real quick. This is how I know this is how I know this dude is a scumbag slash liar, right? So you got this dude right here. Uh, where are you at? So this dude right here, right? You mean to tell me that he's not gonna take the opportunity because she's not a bad looking woman? I'd smash. Hell, I'm not gonna lie. I'd smash. I mean, her body's kind of oddly shaped, but I mean, I've I've done worse. But anyway, like, bro, let's just keep it a buck. She light skin. Uh, I don't know, I guess she got the, the good weave in, or maybe she got her hair straightened, I don't know. Maybe she got the good hair, I don't know. But yeah, she, she's not a bad looking chick. And you mean to tell me that this dude, given the opportunity, she approaches him? She approaches him? She approaches him? And he's not gonna try to smash? <laughs> that don't make no sense. God, I gotta hit you with the Umar Johnson. Gotta say it three times for y'all niggas to get it that you met Mr. Wade in October 2019 well, at the have, judges we conference. We haven't gotten to the point where Ms. Willis should be treated hostile under secret. Uh, I think well, we have. I very Mr. much want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be not here. Not so much that you're hostile, Ms. Willis. It'd be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Ms. Merchant's. Thank Ms. Merchant's interests are, are contradictory. Look at that, she can't even talk because she's about to trip over her words because she knows she's in the wrong. That's actually amazing. Contrary to democracy, Your Honor. Not Contrary to democracy? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. So, because you decided to open your legs to a dude and then hire him on a case that he wasn't qualified for and you paid him an exorbitant amount of money off the taxpayer's dime, which is illegal, by the way, and now we're, it's, it's, this is against democracy. Got it. So, you should be able to do what you want, sleep with whoever you want, despite it being a conflict of interest, pay him um, thousands of dollars that he shouldn't have received off the taxpayer's dime, and now it's a threat to democracy. <sighs> Shout out to my ex for saying what we need is black women to be in more positions of power and the country will be fixed. Shout out to her. To mine. A Fulton County District Attorney in charge of criminally prosecuting former President Donald Trump for interference in the 2020 election shockingly took the stand during a hearing in the case. Bonnie Willis had sought to avoid testifying about the allegation. She Look how smug she looks. Look how smug she looks. Sitting back. Confident. Yeah. Y'all ain't gonna do nothing to me. Yeah. The allegation she was in a romantic relationship with the special prosecutor she assigned to the Trump case. But in an about face, she stormed into the courtroom and she insisted that she testify. Please give me the time period. <laughs> Mr. Wade about. visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in right here. Admit she tries to play dumb talking about something. Mr. Wade visits you at the place you live. Assigned to the Trump case. But in an about face, she stormed into the courtroom and she insisted.
See, look, this is what I mean. Like, bro, she she's not a bad looking Had lady. sought to avoid testifying about the allegation. She was in a romantic relationship with the special prosecutor she assigned to the Trump case. But in an about face, she stormed into the courtroom. See? Like, she ain't bad looking. Like, face, eye, hair good, her body. It's I I give her like a solid five, five, six, you know? Like, you know, she... She, she insisted that she testify. Please give me the time period. That <laughs> Mr. Wade about. visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Of course. We, we know he was at your crib, boo. Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. no. This is the truth. Judge, and this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is, it is a lie. Right, Ms. Will. <laughs> oh, poor baby getting frustrated. You Mr. Sena, I think you were going to take five minutes. The Fulton County District Attorney made headlines when she brought RICO charges against the former president and more than a dozen of his campaign staff. In an extraordinary moment, Willis marched into the Atlanta courtroom while attorneys were arguing over... That girl got no ass at all. Stop it. Get some help. ...whether she should be forced to testify. As she approached the prosecutor's table in court, she looked before the judge, and as the entire gallery watched, she uttered four simple words, I'm ready to go. I would ask... Um... Yeah, that boy Nathan was definitely uh, hitting her from the back. <laughs> I need oh, three documents in front of me, and they're the three filings of Ms. Merchant. Three filings? <clears throat> Does anyone have the three filings of Ms. Merchant? Does the court have the three filings of Ms. Merchant? When you say the filings, you mean like the pleadings? The pleadings, yes, Your Honor. Okay. I think we could locate those for you in the supplemental. I want the one filed on January the 8th, the one filed immediately after we filed ours, and the final one. Oh, you hear her voice cracking? What the one filed on the eighth? <laughs> it's like you know when you a kid and then your parents catch you on something, you oh, you can hear her voice cracking. She knows she's she knows she's caught, bro. Like Fanny, just accept it, bro. You're caught. It's over. This is dead. Your your career's like. If you want to take a break to get them, I can make a copy. I think we have one. You know, the only copy I have is going to have my notes on it. So if we don't have a clean copy. We'll have a five minute break during all the documents. Uh, all right. I'll sit here and wait for Defense attorneys asked Willis to clear up the timeline of when she hired Wade, as they argue Willis hired him after the two were involved in a romantic relationship. Let's start back in 2019. Yep. So um, you and Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at a conference? That is correct. And I think in one of your motions, you tried to implicate I slept with him at that conference, which I find to be extremely offensive. Yeah, because you probably did, and you're trying to gaslight this lady. You probably met Smash, and that's probably what led him to you hiring him. Let's cut the crap, lady. You're full of shit. Let's be honest. I stayed at that conference. Mr. Wade was my teacher. I did not meet him when he taught the class. He was your teacher, but you're the DA, and he's technically not even qualified to be on the case that you hired him for. <laughs> that don't make no sense. I was standing outside talking to Lisa Reeves, who is a judge. Me and her were just having a conversation. Mr. Wade walks up, I think they hug each other. They have some brief conversation. She introduces us. But Robin Yerdy, Willis's old college friend, told the court earlier the romantic relationship began in October of 2019. Willis previously lived in Yerty's condo prior to their fallout, and the defense hammered her on whether Wade visited the condo prior to the election interference case. But Willis fired back, asserting the defense accusations were all lies. How often did Mr. Wade visit you at a place where you were living between 2019 and 2021? So you want to start with the lie that he lived with me in, in South Fulton in 2019, a home he's never been to? That's one lie you told in Judge, your document. I, no, you, Judge, I didn't ask her about that. 
Miss oh. Merchant, I want you to ask a very precise question. I think she's saying and answering that he did not live with her. So why don't we break that up into smaller yeah. parts? And I, I didn't ask about living. But you put in your, did, while we're talking about professionalism, no. Ask her about that, the lies where you were living between. But Willis fired back asserting the defense accusations were all lies. How often did Mr. Wade visit you at a place where you were living? between 2019 and 2021. All right, so very simple question. How often did Nathan Wade visit you at your residence? Answer the question, Fani. So you wanna start with the lie that he lived with me in, in South Fulton in 2019? She didn't say that, but you know, try, keep gaslighting, Fanny. keep gaslighting. Seeing the home he's never been to, that's one lie you told in Judge, your document. I, no. You, Judge, I didn't ask her about that. Miss um, Merchant, I want you to ask a very precise question. I think she's saying and answering that he did not live with her. So why don't we break that up into smaller yeah, parts? And I, I, I didn't ask about living. But you put in your, did, while we're talking about professionalism, no, while we're talking about professionalism, she put in three different documents he lived with me. Full opportunity to respond. Oh, you mad, Fanny? Um, let me, let me, can y'all zoom in and show me that document? In and 2000, filed that with the court. In 2019. He's never been to South Fulton. In 2019, I lived in South Fulton. How do you know he's never been to South Fulton? Have you been keeping track of this man, uh, 24-7, 365? Like, what if he got family in South Fulton? Maybe maybe he got, like, a cousin that stayed over there, and maybe, you know, he was just down there just visiting. Who knows? So you mean to tell me you know this man's whereabouts all the time? Sounds suspicious. He has never been to my residence in 2019, ever, not once. Lies, because we got the cell phone data, bitch. In 2019, he's never been to your residence, any place. I lived in my home in South Fulton before I started getting the threats that were here, a house I paid for with my own sweat and tears. I'm no longer able to live there. But in 2019, I did. And in the two months of 2019 that I knew Mr. Wade, three months, the beginning of October, all of November, and all of December, Mr. Wade never came to my house in South Fulton. Let me help you out. I lived there in 2020. He never came to my house in 2020, let alone live with me, as you put falsely in these documents. In the first three months of 2021, when I could still enjoy my home, Mr. Wade never came to South Fulton, and it is certainly a lie that he lived with me. Then it came time to question Willis about the vacations the two took together and who paid for the trips. Talk about, you know, you said that sometimes you paid Ms. Yerdy cash. Um, I don't when think you that, went, I'm sorry. Sorry, when you went on vacation with Mr. Wade, um, let's, let's just go one by one. Let's, um, let's start with the first one. What's the first time you went on vacation with Mr. Wade? I think the first time we went on vacation was around April of 22. And it's a vacation is a stretch, but I'm trying to be comprehensive. Um, vacation is a stretch, but I'm trying to be comprehensive. Bruh, it was a vacation, Fanny. Just, just admit it. You went somewhere, he was clapping the cheeks while y'all were out in Bali, Hawaii. I don't care. Y'all went out so he could clap the cheeks and y'all could unwind. Let's just call it for what it is. I recall April of 22, his birthday is March the 18th. Um, so that would have been his 49th birthday. Oh, so you gave him that birthday sex, birthday sex. Um, I took him to like Tennessee for the day. I think we went to a museum. I think we might've stayed the night. I'm not sure. Ooh. But, I mean, did y'all get a hotel room and sleep in the same bed? Tennessee's kind of hard to call a vacation, but I just am trying to be inclusive. And it, like I said, I don't think, I know it wasn't more than a day um, to get and spend the night. I think that we did. That's what I'm telling you. I think that there's a possibility that we stayed that night. In April. I think there's a possibility that we stayed. <laughs> April of 22. Who paid for the hotel? I think I did. It was his birthday. When did you start dating? When I started dating Mr. Wade. Mm -hmm. It was right around then. Um, that April 2022? 22. 22, yes. 2022. It was a, around then. I don't know, like, you know, it's not like when you're in grade school and you send a little letter and it says, will you be my girlfriend? And you check it. 
Yeah, because guess what? Y'all were adults and y'all were scandalous adults, so y'all were fucking around. Yeah, I'll say it, fucking around, because I'm way into the YouTube video, so I can curse at this point. So guess what? Y'all were fucking around, y'all continued to fuck around until this nigga got a fucking divorce. And then after he got the divorce, y'all decided to make it official, and now that's the timeline that y'all are using to fucking defend yourself in this case. Shut the fuck up. You know what the fuck you did. I don't know why the judge and the fucking people in the courtroom are entertaining this bullshit. If you are black, hell, if you've been in a relationship, if you've seen niggas get booty calls and just live life for more than, I don't know, 19 years and you're not naive as fuck, you know what the fuck happened. Guess what? These niggas were fucking and then he got a divorce because, oh man, I'm gonna I'm leave my wife for you, Fanny. I love you, Fanny. He leaves his wife. They make it official. And guess what? Here's where we're at. But now the argument is, were y'all really fucking before the divorce and before you hired him on? as the guy yes the answer is yes obviously i don't know the day that we started seeing each other but it was early 22 is my y'all didn't make it facebook official to commemorate it wow that's crazy my recollection okay early 22 and you all went to florida on vacation as well i don't recall going to florida on vacation with him you never went to florida with mr wade we went to when we went to get on the cruise ship we went to miami okay that's the um, only time that you went to florida with him i think we went to miami and spent the night that's my recollection okay i think we spent one night so that we wouldn't miss the ship that's my recollection of our you paid for that hotel in miami mm -hmm. i don't remember that and of course you don't how'd you get to miami we would have flown okay. and we've done that so that i'm clear We've done that twice. I think one time we stayed, and I honestly can't tell you, did we stay when the ship left or did we stay when the ship came back? I also can't tell you, so there's two cruises out of Miami. There's one that's in that October time period that was with his mom, and then there was another that was a New Year's Eve trip. I know I paid for the New Year's Eve trip because the tickets were six ninety seven each, and I thought this is ridiculous that the tickets are $700 to go to Miami, but when you travel during New Year's Eve, you know they get you um so let's let's just back up and talk about the first time that you went to to florida with mr wade um that was the time that you said you stayed in miami at the hotel the first night that's the time i told you i am not sure so i'm not sure of two things so i want to make sure that my testimony is clear yeah. i'm not sure if we stayed in miami All right. All right, on the I've october had trip i've had enough of this. i'm not sure if we stayed in miami on so you get the point i've already broken this down she's lying they were clapping cheeks and then she hired him well, here, actually, no, that's not right. So, he was clapping the cheeks. He gets divorced. She hires him. They make it official. And here we are. And they're trying to play it like this was all done. Just, oh, no, there was, there was nothing wrong with this. Like, bro, just, just admit he was, just, just admit he was fucking before you hired him on the case. Jesus Christ. Just, it's not hard. Just tell the truth. And that's then, hold on. And then you got this dumbass right here who was, Nathan Wade's divorce lawyer, apparently, right? So this is the guy who was over Nathan Wade with his divorce from his wife, right? You know, the divorce that mysteriously happened, right, before he got on the Trump case with Fanny. So this is his divorce lawyer, right? And so now this guy's pretending like he don't know. Like, oh my God, the things I talked about with my client, that's confidential. Like, bro, you know, even off the record, because you know how niggas do. You know how niggas do. Yeah. Hey, he was probably like, hey, man. You fucked Fanny? Nigga, yeah, I fucked Fanny. Oh, yeah, nigga, yeah, bro, yeah, nigga, good shit, bro, good shit. Like, bro, I know how niggas think. I know how niggas get down. Just because I'm white, or sorry, just because I'm biracial doesn't mean I don't know how niggas think. This shit is crazy. Mr. Wade told you that they had sex at the office, though, correct? I don't recall him stating that, no. Mr. Wade told you that they had sex at the office, though, correct? I don't recall him saying that, no. Yeah, of course you don't recall. Of course! You don't recall it? No. So it's possible he did say that? You just don't remember one way or another? I do not remember him saying that. It was two pages of text messages between you and Ms. Merchant, correct? Correct. All right. Now, the first page starts off by saying, Ms. Merchant, like just date don't hire him do you think it started before she hired him you see that oh 
oh, now this nigga can't read, but he's a lawyer, right? This nigga can't read all of a sudden, but he's a lawyer. Been a lawyer for X amount of years, but now this nigga can't read and can't find shit on a piece of paper, right? That's actually amazing. Like, bro, come the fuck on, bro. <laughs> Yes, I see it. Yes. Damn, that took you forever, my boy. And your response to that was absolutely I'm correct. Gonna, I'm going to object, ask and answer in cumulative. All right, so. Uh... Well, I think we know now, Alex, that Terrence Bradley exchanged texts with Ashley Merchant. She's Mike Roman's attorney, where he offered up a bunch of information about the relationship between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade. Today, he is trying to walk that back and say that he didn't have any personal knowledge, including when the relationship started, he never saw them together, that any knowledge he had about the relationship came from a single conversation with Nathan Wade. But the defense is trying to establish, you knew that this woman represented a defendant in the Fulton County RICO case. You knew why she was asking you these questions. She even gave you a draft of her motion to disqualify. And if there had been something patently false in there, you're a lawyer. You would have told her as much, wouldn't you? And he at one point said, well, I can't say I would or I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. But they have established that he fully understood what they were doing with the information that he provided and that he has an obligation to tell the truth today. And the bottom line, Alex, is there really is no in-between. He was either lying and or speculating when he confessed to Ashley Merchant by text, or he is covering up for D.A. Willis and Nathan Wade now. And he's covering up for D.A. Willis and Nathan Wade because... You know, in the black community, they have this thing called um, no snitching. So let's give them a round of applause for that. Whoops. But shout out to Black Conservative Perspective. I'm just using a piece of his video. I'll mention him in the little info description uh, and tag him and all that good jazz. Um, hopefully I can collab with him one day when my channel gets big enough. But yeah. All right, guys. So once again, we got to follow up on the evidentiary hearing involving Miss Fanny Cash Only Willis and Mr. Nathan Hot Dog Wade. Because today, the star witness, Mr. Terrence Bradley, uh, Mr. Nathan Wade's uh, ex-colleague, testified today uh, under oath about what he knows about this relationship between Mr. Nathan Wade and Miss Fanny Willis. Specifically, when did it began now the reason why this guy was the star witness is because he is the whistleblower that sent the bombshell text messages to the trump attorneys basically signaling that yeah there was a relationship between mr nathan wade and miss fanny willis before the trump rico case began with and roll credits <laughs> So, he started this chain of events and now he's trying to walk his evidence back. Yeah, that's actually crazy. And now you have Fonnie and you have Nathan Wade fighting tooth and nail to prevent all the evidence from coming out showing that they were fucking and they were in a relationship before he was hired onto the case. Amazing stuff. But I'm going to just leave it right there. I'm going to tag Black Conservative Perspective in the video because obviously I've proven my case. They're both full of shit. They're both lying. They both need to be disqualified from the case and they both need to be locked up in jail for fucking tax fraud. Or, no, I guess it wouldn't be tax fraud, but they did uh, spend uh, taxpayer money on vacations and shit. So that has to be illegal, right? But I've been your boy Jerice with another episode of Real Talk. I'll catch y'all on the next one, man. I'm gone. Before you go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up your skull, stop living life blind. Before you go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up your skull, stop living life blind. Before you go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up your skull, stop living life blind. Before you go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up